Now that all our tracks are grouped together, we are ready to edit our drums in Logic Pro. Let's go into the Arrange window with Apple One. Now before you start editing, look at a couple of things. First, in the upper right hand corner, the drag pull down menu. There's five different options, but I'm going to suggest crossfade, simply because that means when you make edits and regions overlap, Logic will automatically draw crossfades in. Very cool. Also up here, there's the three different cursor options. You have your left click, your command click, and your right click. I'm okay with my left click being pointer for selecting things and dragging, and my right click being scissors for making my edits, but I'm going to change my command click to the text tool. That way, if I need to rename any audio regions, I can do it pretty easily. In the bottom right hand corner of your screen, click the waveform zoom button, and you'll notice a slider appears. By moving that slider up and down, it's going to increase the individual waveform zoom on each track. That's really, really helpful when you're editing drums because then you can see the transients a lot better. So let's leave a little bit of zoom on. Okay, let's listen to our drums and find an edit point. Ah, there's one. Hear that kick right when the guitars come back in. Sounds like it's a little bit early. Yeah. Oh, for those of you who don't know, to zoom in and out like that, click in the timeline and then either move your mouse up to zoom out or down to zoom in. Now we know that kick is early. So let's zoom in on it both horizontally and vertically. Since our tracks are grouped together, if you zoom in on one track, they're all going to do the same. So put your cursor in the bottom left-hand corner of the track name over here and click and drag, and all of our drums are going to get bigger. Okay. To make edit points, we have our right click assigned to the scissors tool, so that's going to be very fast. Make an edit point right before that early kick starts, and then make another edit point somewhere before the next big transient. In this case, it's our next snare hit. Now just drag to the right. Now as a reference point, look down here. Our guitars and our bass all start around here, so if we can get our kick in that general area, it's probably going to sound pretty close. So let's try about there maybe. Now Logic is a little confused about our crossfade because of the way these regions are overlapping, but click in these regions over here and you'll see the crossfade gets fixed. That's great. Now just drag back with the edge edit tool. That'll appear automatically if you put your cursor near the edge of a waveform. And Logic automatically put a crossfade in for us. So let's zoom out and let's listen to that. a lot better. Let's listen one more time. Great. Now there's one more type of editing you may have to do when one drum has a little bop in it, whether the drummer hits the mic or the cable got moved, and you don't want to edit all your drums at once. I have an instance of this over here in my low tom where the cable must have got stepped on or something. Listen to this nasty noise in the left channel. Hear that? And you can actually see it. Now, we just want to affect our low tom, so we have to disable our groups. Let's go into the mixer window with Apple II. And just like we did before, highlight all your drums. And in the group selection box, just go to no group. That'll turn them off. Okay, back to the arrange window, Apple I. Let's just edit that out completely. So using your scissors tool, make an edit right before that nasty noise. And right after it, click and delete. Let's see how that sounds. That's a lot better. Now, if you're getting pops and clicks, you're going to need to use the fade tool to write those in when the audio cuts in and comes back in. But for now, this is okay. So now you know how to edit multi-track drums all at one time, and you also know how to go in and do surgical strikes on bad noises that may be on individual tracks.